everyone. Welcome to VTU E sectiona. So in this lecture number two of module number one, I am going to show how to create the mobile application from scratch. So please remember one thing. So this lecture will play an important role throughout your syllabus. Or even if you are a new beginner, you must know how to make use of Android Studio Framework. So in this lecture, I am going to explain all the features and the attributes that are available in Android Studio and how to use them and how to develop a simple first application as per your syllabus. So coming to what is this? As I mentioned earlier, the Android Studio is in a framework that we are going to use in our Android application development. Where you can find this Android Studio? This is where you can find the Android Studio. The site is developers.google.com. Developers.android.com. This is the site from where you can download the. Android Studio for your devices. As I mentioned earlier, the minimum configuration that you must have to use the Android Studio is the device, the mission with Wi-Fi or more configuration plus 8 GB RAM. Okay, so in this developers.android.com, so where you can uh, find, uh, so just look at your where you can download the Android Studio here. So can you please observe? Is my cursor is visible? That the name is Android Studio. If you click on this tab, so it will open the Android Studio download uh, site or web page. So please observe. So where you can download the Android Studio for your devices? It's around eight hundred and seventy-two MB. So you can download the most recent version of Android Studio by downloading this. Hardly you need. It's a single click installation. Just one click. So it will install. It will be installed in your device, and you, it, your Android Studio will be ready to use. So in myth, in my in this video, I have already installed Android Studio, and my Android Studio is ready to use. This is my Android Studio. So we we have lot of options. If you want to open the existing um, project which is already developed, you can go for the second option. Otherwise, click on Create New Project. So click on Create New Project. Once after clicking the creating new project, just if you observe where we have five options. First one is so: Are you developing an application for phone or tablet? Then you have to use this this templates. Are you developing an application for smart OS? Means, for example, your wearables watch. So you have to use this kind of templates. Are you developing an application for Android TV? Then we have this templates. Are you developing for automotive? Then we have media service, messaging service. So now newly introduced future features. So there is another feature that has been introduced from Google for Internet of Things. That is nothing but Android Things. Okay. So presently, as per your syllabus, we are going to completely concentrate towards only mobile application development. We are not going to work with the wearables or Android TV or automotives or Android things. So I will go with the phone or tablets. So please remember one thing: here you can we can come across lot of wide variety of templates. Out of these templates, I'm going to use empty template. Why? Because as a beginner, you must start with the empty template. As a beginner, you must begin with the empty template. Why? Because once you know how to develop a mobile applications, then you can make use of the readily available templates as per your application requirement. So as I am a new beginner, so I will go with the empty template or empty activity. It's nothing but a white blank sheet. Okay. So once after selecting that empty activity, the template that you have to select is project template is empty activity. Select that one and click on next. So where it will ask for, where it will ask you to mention the uh, name of the project. So I will give the name as VTU application. Are my first application. The project name is my first application. It will show where your what's the package name. The package name is com dot example dot my application. Don't worry about it. So the where your project will be saved. That location is indicated here. And the language, which language you are going to use for your Android application development. As I mentioned earlier, there are two languages which we can be used. For the mobile application development, one is Java, other one is Kotlin. Ah, uh, but 
we are not going to use the Kotlin. Why? Because your complete syllabus is on Java. Okay. So you have to mention which programming language you are going to use. I am going to mention it as Java. So next, this is the APA level. What is this APA level or what's the Android version? So please observe here. So if you develop application for this Android 6.0, then your application will be compatible with the 94% Android users who are using Android devices as of now. Just observe, I will show another one difference. I will select the latest version as I mentioned earlier, Android R. So if you develop application using this Android R means, so your application will be compatible with only 24% users. So please remember one thing. So here you have to select the APA level should be greater than 21 and it should cover maximum number of users. The percentage of coverage should be more than 90. So I will go with 23, that is nothing but Marshmallow. So, so my application will be compatible with the 94% Android users. Okay, so once after that, you have to click on finish. So observe here, firstly you have to give the project name, I have given the name as my first application. Next, it will show where your project will be saved and which language you are going to use. There are two possibilities. One is Java, the one is Kotlin. As per our syllabus, we must go with the Java itself. I'm, going to, I'm choosing Java. Next, you have to select the version. So APA level, please mark this. The APA level should be greater than 21. So I'm selecting APA level is 23. So the application that I'm developing is 94% compatible with the devices that are on market. So next, I will click on finish. So once you click on finish, it will take around five minutes based on your system configuration. It will take around five minutes to build the griddle. Okay. To build the griddle. So at that time, don't do anything. Just wait until the completion is half over. Just observe here. So I guess you can uh, uh, observe the feature. It will building the griddle. The synchronization is not just now started. So don't disturb your device at this moment. You have to wait at least two to three minutes until the message will appear that is build is successful. So what is this griddle means? It's nothing but an execution engine or the execution machine that is present in your Android studio that will be built, that will be synchronized with the newly created project. For that it takes around three to five minutes. So and please remember, so before you make use of this Android Studio, you must make sure that your system is connected to the internet. Why? Because to the whatever the synchronization that is happening right now, for this synchronization, so the internet connection is mandatory. Otherwise, you will get error. Until the internet connection is not there, don't turn on, don't create the new project using Android Studio. The first thing you have to make sure that my device is connected to internet, then turn on the Android Studio and create the project or create a new activity. Okay, so once, why this internet connectivity is required? Why? Because the Gradle scripts, we are not writing the Gradle scripts. Gradle scripts are responsible for execution of your Android application, which is already present. Okay, to that Gradle should, script should be synchronized with the project. For that, it will take around two to three minutes and it needs internet connectivity. So please observe, now this uh, Gradle synchronize is finished. Can you, can, is this message is visible? The Gradle synchronization is finished. So now my project is ready to use. My project is ready to use. Okay. So just now I have created a project by name, my first application. Okay. So before I start, so please remember, so for every individual project that you are going to create, there will be one main activity. As you, if you are, if you know in C programming, there will be one main function in your Android application, there will be one main activity. So as I mentioned earlier, there might be n activities together. We call it as a single application out of n activities. There should be one main activity. Okay. That, that will be created automatically when you create your project. Okay. Along this, along with that main activity, there will be a design part. Okay. So once you create a project, it will create two parts. One is 
Java part, other one is design part. Java part will be given with the extension .java. Design part will be given with the extension .xml. What is this XML means? Extended markup language. So whatever the design that we are going to do, do in your Android application, it will be in the form of XML. That is nothing but extended markup language. So now I have created a project. It is having only one activity by name, main activity. This is the code, which is automatically generated. Okay. So this is the design part. The main activity name is activity underscore main dot XML. So this is the design part. Okay. So just now I have created a project which in turn created two files. One is Java file, other one is design file. Java file ends with dot Java, design file ends with dot XML. This is the first thing you must know. Okay, sir, what to do, sir, if unknowingly if I close this file? Well, no, I don't have Java file here. How to open it once again? Just observe your, this is my project pane layout. Okay, so in this project, so we can observe there is an app. Okay, there are two things you can, you can observe here in this uh, route. One is app, other one is Gradle scripts. Okay, so this app will be having the data related to your application. This Gradle scripts, as I mentioned earlier, it is auto generated one. For this only, we need the internet connectivity. Okay, so just now I have closed my Java part, right? So what is this Java part? What is this XML part? So please observe, Java part is responsible for writing the logic. Whatever the implementation, whatever the logic is required for your application will be mentioned inside this Java part. Will be mentioned inside this Java part. So whatever the design that is required in your application will be designed in your, in your design part in the form of .xml. Okay. So please observe, in this application folder, there are three subfolders are present. One is manifest, other one is Java, other one is resource. I will explain one by one. So what is this manifest means? Manifest will serve as a metadata. Metadata in the sense, it will be having overall how many activities are there in your application, what's the name of those activities, whether those activities are executable, what's the, if you want to give any uh, logo for your application, so you can give that logo here, such things, what's the name of your application, such things will be present inside this manifest folder in the form of manifest file, that is Android manifest.xml. Just observe, I will open this Android manifest.xml. So my application, so this is a, a one, it, it will be written in the form of XML. Okay, the file name is manifest file. So please observe what the application, inside the application tag, we have how many activities are present here? Only one activity is present. What's the name of that activity? Main activity. Whether it's an executable one or not, so you can check for the intent filters. If the intent filters are present, then this activity is executable. If this intent filters are not present, then this activity is not executable. So what's the icon that we have used for this application? So we have used default icon. What's the label of my application? My application name is, my application name is my first application. My application name is my first application. My first application. So you can change the application label, you can change the icon, you can change the executability and you can check how many activities are present in your Android app by using this manifest file that is present inside the manifest folder. Okay, so inside the app folder we have three folders, one is manifest, other one is Java, other one is resource. We are done with the manifest. Manifest is nothing but a metadata that will provide the application name, that will provide the application icon. If you want to change the icon of your application, you can, you can go to this manifest file and you can change the application icon. If you want to change the name, you can go to this manifest file and you can change the application name. So if you want to check how many activities are there inside my application, so you can easily, easily check how many activities are present. As of now, I have only one activity in my application. Just observe, this is my application opening tag. 
This is my application closing tag. Inside this application opening and closing tag, how many activities are there? Only one activity is there. Okay. This is the role of manifest folder. So next we have Java. As I mentioned earlier, the importance of Java folder, the role of Java is for placing the logic for your application. How to place the logic for your application? By using this Java folder. Okay. So inside this Java folder, you can look here. We have three folders present here. One is com.example my first application, com.example my first application. Just within the braces, you can observe here. We have we have term your Android test and test. So these two folders are auto-generated folders. Okay. Don't disturb or don't check, don't do anything for these two folders. We are not going to use these two folders. The folder that we are going to use the, to access the Java file is the first one. That is the first one without anything that is present inside the braces. Okay, so please observe. So if unknowingly, if you have closed your Java file, which is created once you open the new project, so you can find the Java file in the first folder of Java folder. Okay, don't disturb these two folders that is Android test and test. These two folders are auto generated folders. So just if you click on the first folder, you can find the main activity. Click on that main activity that will open in turn the closed Java file. If you have closed this Java file unknowingly, okay, so inside the Java folder, the first folder will be having the file that is required to, Im to introduce the logic part. So the Java part is completely responsible for the logic so that we are going to place in our mobile application. Okay. So this is about the Java folder. Java folder will be having through three subfolders inside out of those three subfolders. The first folder will be having the core Java files. How many activities are there? Those activity Java files will be present in the first folder. Okay. Next we have another one last folder that is resources. What's the name? Resources. Inside this resources, we have four folders. First one is drawable. Second one is layout. Third one is mip map. Fourth one is value. What is this drawable? For example, I need to introduce my picture, my image. I need to have the logo of VTU inside my application. Such things, such drawable things can be placed inside this drawable folders. And please make sure so that such file should uh, for example, if you are using the image just means you have the naming convention should be lowercase letters. Okay. And it should end with the extension PNG or JPG. Okay. Only those two extensions are supported inside this drawable folders and the naming convention should be lowercase letters. Okay. So the external files, the external logos or external images which can be used, which can be drag and drop, which can be downloaded, which can be included inside this drawable folder and which can be used in our Android project. So next layout. So please remember one thing out of this fold, fold, four folders, this folder is an important folder. Why? Because this folder is responsible for your design. So just observe. So if you close unknowingly, if you close this XML design part of your application, so you can fold the design, you can find the design part inside this layout. Inside the resource folder, inside the layout folder, you can find the design part. You can find the design part. It, it will be an XML file. Okay. So whatever the design that you're going to do, that will be in on this white sheet or the, on this empty activity. Okay. So next, what is this MIP map? So this MIP map will be used to uh, <clears throat> make use of visual audio related data. For example, I need to develop a video player. I need to develop a music player. So such data, such uh, required uh, data can be placed inside this MIP map folder. So last one values for us uh, uh, in my uh, Android studio, in my Android application, I have only five colors. I need 500 colors. How to place those colors? So this is where inside the values. So I have, I need to make use of different themes. This is where you can find. Okay. 
the values is completely responsible for design such such as colors such as themes so so dear students make sure that inside the resources we have four folders out of four folders first folder is drawable folder which will be used to make use which will be used to store the external files which can be used in our design second folder is layout that's the core part that's the important part that you have to note where the design will be present in the form of xml file the third one is mip map so where you can use the external devices external files can be downloaded here such as audio files or video files can be downloaded here can be saved here and can be used in your application values sir i i want 500 colors and i want uh, different themes so this values folder will be used to store the different colors and different themes okay this is about the file hierarchy that is present in your android application so just app inside app three folders will be there first one is manifest it's nothing but metadata where you will come across you can you can change the name you can change the logo you can change the activities you can check how many activities are present out of those activities how many activities are executable you can check in this manifest folder java this is for the implementation section if you want to embed any logic if you want to introduce any logic so as we are using java programming language you can embed that so which will be present in the first folder of the java file so next resources this is completely for design part where we have four folders drawable folder is responsible for using the external logos device images the layout file is responsible for design layout so the mip map for external for files the values for the various colors and themes so don't disturb this gradle only unless you will get error with respect to versions so this gradle scripts are auto generated so it will automatically embedded to your project that's why we need the internet connectivity okay this is about the file hierarchy that is present in your android studio so next so coming to this as i mentioned earlier this is the code part this is java part is responsible for implementation to make the changes to add the actions to what are the actions for the widgets that you are going to add in your design part just observe here so we have only one method by the class name is main activity which act extends app compact activity so just we have created that activity and the content that is present in the activity it's it is based on the layout by name activity underscore main which is present in this design part just observe what's the name of that design activity underscore main so we are using that name r dot layout what's that layout name activity underscore name the content of this activity has been set to r lot r dot layout dot activity underscore main okay just simple just we have created an activity and the content of that activity is set activity underscore main it's nothing but what is there in the design okay that's what we have created so in upcoming sessions i will show how to introduce the logic how to uh, place the logic for this uh, java part and how to add the action for the widgets or the components that you are going to add for your design part okay so this is my design part okay so this is the component tree what is this component tree for example i will add a button here i have added a button okay just have added a button to my design just observe your the component tree is automatically updated previously it was only it was only text view just now i have added a button along with the text view is it visible the button is added so what is this design why it is showing xml here just observe your just observe so in design we have three parts in design we have three parts so if you look at the left to right to top you can have three parts here so presently we are working with only design presently we are working with only white sheet of paper that is nothing but design so if you want split code along with the design you can use the second option so please observe so the design code is present along with the design 
okay just a simple thing so whatever you are going to code that will be designed here that will be that you can check the design as well as code together in kind of in this kind of view so if you want to work with only code just choose the code option is it visible the code just code is visible we don't have design here there are three features available with respect to design so just observe this java part is completely responsible for development completely responsible for placing the logic but this design part will be having three sections one you can go with only design by using drag and drop second one split where you can use both code as well as both code as well as design both code as well as design will be present if you make use of the split option so if you make use of code means only code okay so please observe this code is auto generated one for example just now i added a button the code responsible for the button is automatically added so for just to show it once again so i will go to design so whatever the changes that you are going to do in the design will be automatically will be automatically mentioned in the code part so please observe here i have two things in my design one is button other one is text the text is indicating a low word the button so just i will delete this button once again so i will go to code part just observe we have two things one is design layout inside the design layout i have text view text view means the text that is displaying so what's the content that is present inside the text view a low word is it clear so there is no need of code writing the code to perform the design just if you drag and drop the components which are required to your design the code will be automatically generated like this so just observe once again i have dragged the button so i will go to code just observe that button code is automatically added okay so that makes the development or the design process easy in this android studio why because whatever you are going to drag and drop to your design part will be will automatically that particular code will be generated in the code part okay so as per my first application requirement just i will i need to display the name i will need to display the name just observe so what's the content that i have here this is the text view text view is nothing but to display the text to the user to display the output to the user what i what i am displaying here allow word i will change this allow word i will make the change in the code itself what is there in the allow word the code that is in the code we have a feature called android dot text inside the text view this is my text view component it is closing here so the xml the xml code will work in this manner just observe so here the layout has been opened right the layout open so the same layout will be closed here so it is a combination of opening and closing tag okay so here the text view has been opened here the opening tag the corresponding closing tag whatever the changes that you want to do th that should be done within this opening and closing tag okay text view so inside the text view we have lot of attributes i will come to this attributes in the design part so first the third attribute is text i will rename this text that is vtu mobile vtu i will write the subject code that is 18 cs 651 okay so i will go to design part just observe is the changes made so if you want to change the attributes there is no need of visiting the design code part every individual time so in the design part itself we, this is my design right this is my design select that component for which the attribute should be changed select that component for example i need to change the size so just observe you can you can uh, look you can uh, see the search bar for the attributes so where i am going to search for size so please remember the uh unit that we use for the text sizes scale independent pixel means in the form of sp so i will change 36 sp so please observe the text size is automatically changed there is no need of going to the code part to change the text size okay 
so just you can search you can uh, in the design part itself in the design part itself by selecting that component by selecting that particular widget or the view you can search for example i need to change the text vtu i need to change my text to nitin vtu mysuru okay so please observe it will be automatically changed there is no need of there are two ways to change the attributes one is to going to the code part other one is in the design part itself you can find the search bar here okay you can find the search bar here search for the attribute which is which you need to, which you wish to change search for that particular attribute and make the necessary change so i will come to that attributes one by one in the design part okay so i am done with my first application i will change the text to first application please observe in the design part itself i will change the attributes so where i am going to change the text i will change the text to my first my first application okay my first application okay so we are not going to i'm not going to explain anything about the implementation part or the logic part just remember one thing once you create a project so that will create a two parts one is java part other one is xml part java part is responsible for logic xml part is responsible for design in xml part we have through three splits the first split is design where whatever the com components that is required you can search for those components in this search bar for example i need to add the radio buttons search for the radio button drag and drop to your design okay so so you can we have three splits in the design part one is only design other one is code along with the design other one is completely code based on your requirement based on your skill set you can make use of these three features so if you don't know xml go to this complete design just whatever the components that are required for your design you can drag and drop the corresponding code will be automatically updated in the code part so if you want the code as well as design you can use this split so if you want only code you can go through the code okay so in design part in design part of design so please observe so presently we are using only white empty sheet so we have another feature can you please observe select the design where we have three two three attributes so presently i am using only design so you can use only blueprint means you can look at the blueprint of your application design or you can use both design as well as blueprint you can look at the design as well as blueprint both will be available whatever you are going to design that's blueprint will be visible for the user so it's better to make use of only design why because uh, with respect to as a beginner we are not going to develop any why we need this blueprint means if you introduce some something some components which are not visible in such cases we need this blueprint unless you are not using such things there is no need of using the blueprint as a beginner as a beginner it's better to make use of only design it's it, it is better to make use of only this design okay so now my first application is ready why because i am not going to place any logic inside this application just i am doing a design i am placing a text my first application now i need to execute how to execute this application sir so how to execute this so please observe the execution for execution purpose you have option here this play button this play button is responsible for execution so if you click on this play button so your application what you have designed right now will execute so before you click on this play button make sure that inside this box you have the device so please observe as i mentioned earlier uh, uh while explaining about the android studio i have mentioned that uh virtual devices support is there so please observe these are the two virtual devices which i have created in my device one is pixel phone that is api level 30 other one is pixel 3a so if you want to create a new device there is a android virtual device manager what's the name avd manager it's nothing but 
Android Virtual Device Manager. Just click on that Android Virtual Device Manager. So these are the two devices which I have downloaded and installed. One is Pixel 3a and Pixel APA 30. So APA level is 30 and these are, these are the two devices which I am using. So if you want new device, just observe there is an option called create virtual device. Click on that virtual device for which kind of application, for which kind of uh, <coughs> end users you are creating an application for such virtual devices should be used to see the output. So if you are developing for TV, if, you are, if your application is concentrating on smart TV, then select this TV option and download this. Download this. Okay. Download this particular Android TV application virtual device. So if you are develop, if you are working on application development for phones, so just observe, we have lot of options here. Pixel XL, Pixel 4 XL, Pixel 4. Likewise, we have 100. We have 50 different mobiles. And please remember, it will not provide your MI or Samsung as a virtual device. So only the Google products will be used, such as Pixel, Nexus will be used. So already I have downloaded two uh, virtual devices. If required, if you, if you guys require, you can download the new one. It will consume around 1 GB. Uh, data to download the new device. So if you are developing application for wearables such as smartwatches, so these are the virtual devices which are available. So if you are developing application for tablet, so these are the virtual devices. If you are developing for automotives, so these are the virtual devices available. So this is this manager is called as a virtual device manager. Okay, so for example, I need to develop Pixel XL. Just observe, I will click on next. I will select that particular virtual device and I will click on next. Okay. So it will ask me to download. Firstly, it will ask me to download the OS. The release means the version. So that R version is already available. If you need any other version such as Q, Pi, Warrior, Nougat, you can download. So please remember one thing. It's better to go with APA level 25 or above. Why? Because it supports all devices. Okay, presently I'm using the APA level 30. It's better to make use of 28 or above for while downloading the virtual devices. Okay, so it will ask for next. So it will, uh, if you click on finish, it will create the new virtual device. Like this, you can create the new virtual device. Okay, so if required, uh, so for those who are working with the systems with limited storage capabilities, there is no need of downloading this kind of virtual devices. Why? Because this kind of virtual devices itself will occupy 4 GB RAM. So if your devices, if your mission which you are using for Android Studio is of 8 GB RAM, so this virtual device itself will occupy around 2 to 4 GB RAM. So if you want to, for example, sir, I have 6 GB RAM device, sir, shall I? Uh, is it possible to make use of Android Studio for uh, mobile application? Yes, yes. How? Just in place of connecting this virtual dev devices by using this AVD manager, you can make use of your phone and that should be Android. That should be Android. Even the MI, Pivo, Vivo, Oppo, Samsung. Such Android devices can be connected to your through your data cable. Once after connecting that Android device, go to settings, go to settings where you can find the model build name, build number. So tap on that model build number for seven to eight times. Just note down this, tap on that model build number seven to eight times that will automatically turn on your developer options in your mobile developer options. So once the developer options is turned on, your device will be available in place of this virtual devices. So which can be used to execute your, to see, see the output of your newly developed application. Is it clear? What is AVD manager? Android virtual device manager. So two devi virtual devices I have used here. One is Pixel APA 30, Pixel 3a APA level 30. These are the two, two Android virtual devices which I have already downloaded. If required, you guys, you can download it. So please remember, if you are using this Virtual devices to execute your program means your system must have 8 GB RAM. Those who have 4 plus or 6 GB RAM, so those who have constraints, they can go with the 
usage of their own mobiles with the cables data cables by turning on the developer options which are available and your device must be android device okay so now i will select any particular device i will select this pixel apa 31 30 and i will click on play button so please observe so if you click on this play button so it will execute so the execution will happen finally you can see the output in the virtual device so just observe i will click on the play button it will take around two to five minutes to execute is it visible here so the gradle build is building and uh, the avd manager will be started so connecting the avd manager so you can see the log cat you can see the log cat where the execution uh, what are the execution is happening will be the progress will be shown here and you can uh, see the build so where you can look at look here so build how many tasks are running and how the gradle build is happening such things can be tracked here so if you are working with the database so you can look at the database connectivity and how the database is connected and the database created can be checked in this database inspector and even you can use the terminal how you use in the classical programming languages so these are the options we have to see the execution process means how the execution is happening okay so please observe so i have selected this build so can you please observe here the build is successful the build analyzer the build has happened in 60 seconds my execute my application has executed within 60 seconds and it is waiting for the target on device to come online means my device is here my device is ready my virtual device is ready okay it is waiting it is waiting for the connectivity just it is waiting to connect okay so just it is turning on once after that the output whatever we have designed that output will be visible in my virtual device so it will take around two to five minutes uh, don't lose your patience or uh, don't disturb the android studio framework why because it will lead to hang means your device may hang if you disrupt in this execution process in between this execution process so my device is ready the pixel is starting so why and please observe the comment here the installation is happening here my device will be installed my application will be installed in two minutes so we, we can see the output my first application in the virtual device so installing so once the installation is over so the output will be visible in your phone just observe this is my first application the my first application what's the title that i have given what's the change that i have made i have changed the title to my first application is it visible so it has been executed by using the virtual device pixel apa 30 how to add the virtual devices by using the avd manager so make sure that you will select the while choosing the virtual devices you will select for appropriate application along with the appropriate apa level it should be more than 28 plus okay so my output is ready this is your first application okay these are the features so if you want to create activity so you can go to this new and you can explore the features in upcoming sessions, I will show how to create the new activity, how to create the new files, how to create the new features which are available. This is the basics you must know with respect to Android Studio concerned. Whenever you are going to create, whenever you are going to create a project, so you will be automatically created with two parts. One is Java part, other one is XML part. So Java part deals with the implementation, XML part deals with the design part. So the application folder, file hierarchy, there are three folders, Android manifest. So where you can find the metadata related to your application. So where you can find the name of the application, where you can find the logo of the application, where you can find the how many activities are present. Similarly, with respect to Java folder, there will be three folders. Don't disturb the two folders with the subtitles, Android test and test. There will be a first folder where you can find 
where you can find the Java files of the different activities. What's the role of Java file? It is responsible for implementation part. It is responsible for placing the logic. So next, the third folder is resources, where you can fo find four subfolders, which are those subfolders. The first folder is drawables, where you can place the logos or images, which are externally required for your application. Second folder is layout, where you can find the design layout, that is what is the design of your application or the design of your activity. The third one is MIP map with respect to the external files which can be added to that MIP map. The fourth folder is strings or the values where you can find the colors and the themes which are required for your applications if you are working with the design. So once your design is ready, once your logic is ready, so kindly make sure that there is a device connected to your application for the execution. If there is no devices, if you have sufficient RAM space, go to AVD manager, download the new virtual machine or the virtual device as per your application requirement. So kindly make sure that the APA level is more than 28, download that new virtual machine. So connect that virtual machine, click on the play button. The execution process can be checked in the build as well as log cat where, the, where it will briefly show the execution step by step. So if you are working with the database application, you can click on the database inspector to check the database creative creation as well as how the insertion are the things will happen in your databases. So once so your virtual device is ready, once it comes online, whatever the application that you have created, that will be installed in your virtual device and it will be shown as an output. If you don't, if you are not using virtual device, turn on the developer options in your mobile and your mobile should be Android based mobile itself. Turn on the developer options, make use of USB cable, connect your mobile to the uh, your laptop or the device in which you are developing the mobile Android application and you can see the output by in that particular Android phone which you are using. Okay, thank you. This session is an important session. Why? Because which are all the session, which are all the concepts that we are going to discuss in upcoming videos are correlated with this session. Thank you.